I want to show you how to multiply decimals without a calculator as well as some shortcuts that's going to make it very easy to do if you're multiplying by powers of 10. Now see if you can notice a pattern here. These two I'm going to try eventually to multiply. There are three decimal places there. The first one as a fraction would be written three tenths. And the second one would be two one hundredths, wouldn't it? Now we know how to multiply fractions. We multiply the tops and we multiply the bottoms. Note once again, three zeros. The answer, non-reduced, mind you, would be six one-thousandths. That could be written as a decimal, six one-thousandths. Once again, three decimal places. See a pattern? Let's do another. This one has four decimal places. The first number as a fraction would be seven one hundredths, wouldn't it? And the second as a fraction would be three one hundredths. And if I multiplied them, I'd get twenty one. And a hundred times a hundred, I promise, with four zeros is ten thousand. Now, 21 ten thousandths as a decimal, you've got to end the one with the ten thousand spot, got to be careful, is going to look like this. That's 21 ten thousandths. But once again, notice, not four zeros, but four decimal places. One, two, three, four. Wait a minute. Well, we can use this pattern to multiply decimals. The rule is going to be to multiply decimals. Multiply as though they were whole numbers. In other words, as though there wasn't a decimal place at all. Then take that result, that answer, and position the decimal point so that the number of places is equal to the sum, the adding up, of the number of decimal places in the original problem. Take a look at this one. I'm going to assume that the decimal place, at least pretend for a second, that it's not there. 34 times 2. Now, 34 times 2 is 68. Now, I have to remember that it is there. But without the decimal place, with the de decimal point, this answer would be 68. Now, take that result, 68, and I'm going to move the decimal place over the total number of places are in the original problem. This only has one. So I'm going to take it from the right, move it over one place, and my answer is in fact six and eight tenths. So it's not that bad. Okay, once again, we're going to multiply the numbers as if there were no decimal places. Let's erase them. Multiply normally. Oh, Remember how to do that? Let's see. 4 times 3 is 12. 2 carry the 1. 4 times 2 is 8 plus the 1 is going to be 9. Now 1 times 3, put it in the tenth spot of course, and 1 times 2 is 2. Add up your partial products. Carry the 1. And my result without considering the decimal point, is 322. Now what do I do with 322? Count up how many decimal places are in the original problem. I see two decimal places. So with that result, 322, I'll move over those two decimal places from the right. And my answer is, in fact, 3 and 22 one-hundredths. It's not that bad. Now, often, we find ourselves multiplying by 10. And there's a nice shortcut, not only with numbers, but with decimals. 5 times 10 is 50. 3 times 100, 300. 12 times 1,000, 12,000. 
Those are easy, aren't they? Note 1, 0 when I multiply by 10. And I just added 1, 0. Two zeros when I multiplied by 100. And I just added two zeros. There's a pattern here. Three zeros when I multiplied by 1,000. And I kind of just added three zeros, didn't I? Well, we're going to put those two shortcuts that I just showed you together when we multiply decimals by powers of 10. Let's put those two shortcuts together and I'll show you a way to multiply decimals by 10. Well, I'm going to use the second shortcut first. To multiply this number by 10, I'm going to add a 0. And I'm going to pretend, the first, in the first shortcut, that there isn't a decimal there at all. Remember my rule for multiplying decimals. Count how many decimal places there are and move over that many places. Three places. And my answer, at least initially, will be 2,394. And let's read this properly. 520 one thousandths. Now we know I don't need that last zero. So I'll drop it. Now, notice something. What happened from the original question to the final answer is I really moved over one spot to the right. What happened? I multiplied by 10 and I really only moved over one place to the right. That's a good shortcut. Cool. What do you think we're going to do when we multiply by 100? Well, let's do it the hard way. We'll add two zeros and then move back over three places. And that's my answer. Let's drop the zeros. And that's my final answer. But what really happened is in this case to go from the question to the answer to multiply by 100 I just moved over two places. So to multiply by 10 to the tooth or 100, I move over that many places. Cool I've got a new shortcut for you. To multiply decimals by powers of 10, move the decimal place to the right, of course the right, so it's a larger number, the same number of places as there are zeros in the power of 10. Remember, don't forget, when you're multiplying, move to the right because the number should get bigger. If you need to add zeros, you can. Uh, excuse me, Professor Brainiac. For instance, in this example, I have three zeros. So I would need to move the decimal place over three places. But I don't have three places. I can make a third place. How do you make a third digit? Add a zero. Not a problem. And there's my answer. Now, remember, if I move it over to the end, if the decimal place is at the end, I don't write it. Let's multiply this number by a thousand. I'll need to move it over how many places to the right? Three places, because I see three zeros. I don't have three places but I can make additional places. I need two more. I already have one. So I add two zeros and there's my answer. Okay, go try it and try the shortcuts too. Good luck.